Hey y'all, it's Ms. Flores. So today we are going to be talking about prime and composite numbers. So yesterday we were discussing divisibility and factors. Well, we need to understand that prime numbers and composite numbers are different types of numbers based on their factors. So a prime number only has two factors, one and itself. Composite numbers have three or more factors. So we're going to look at this hundreds chart and we are basically going to uh, use multiples in order to sift out the prime numbers. So you can either print this out with me or just follow along if you, uh, if you don't want to do it along with me, but we're going to show how to find prime numbers on a hundreds chart. So first off, we are going to draw an X through the one on my hundreds chart. So my one is right here. I'm going to exit out. The reason why I exit out is because one is a special number. It's not prime because a prime hat number has to be divisible by two numbers, one and itself. One is only divisible by one. So it's not prime. Uh, so it's not considered a prime number. Now we're going to look at two. Two is a prime number because it can only be divided by two numbers evenly, one and two. So I'm going to circle it so I keep track of it. So now we're going to count all of our multiples of two and we're going to put a yellow line through each of our multiples of two. So that would be, that's too big, hold on a second. So that would be four, six, eight, 10, we're just counting by twos, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Now, do you see a pattern that's going on? All numbers that end in uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 0 are all even numbers. They're all multiples of 2. So I can just keep on basically drawing my lines through all of my numbers that end in 2, 4, 6, 8, and 0. All right, now I've got all of my multiples of two done. I'm gonna draw a line through my multiples of two key so that way I can keep track of that. So now we're gonna go on to our next number. Our next number in our top row is three. Well, three is also considered a prime number because three can only be divided evenly by one and three, right? So three is a prime number but every other multiple of three is going to be a composite number because it can be divided also by three, right? Because if it's a multiple of three, it can be divided by three. So we're gonna use our red and we're gonna draw a diagonal line across all of my multiples of three. So my first multiple of three after three would be six. So I'm gonna draw a line through that, then nine, then 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. Do you all see a pattern forming? When I'm drawing these lines, I end up getting a diagonal line. So 39, 42, 45, so I'm creating diagonal lines by coming up with these multiples. 54, 57, 60, 63, 66, 69, 72, 
75, 78, 81, 84, 87, 90, 93, 96, 99. So those are all of my multiples of three from one through 100, right? So I'm going to put on my key, I'm going to draw that little diagonal red line to know that it's a multiple of three. So now, if you think about it, remember when we were talking about our divisibility rules, numbers that are divisible by two and three are numbers that are divisible or that are multiples of two and three. The numbers that are divisible by two and three are also divisible by six, right? So all of the numbers that you see, so like this one, for, for instance, if I look at 30, right? If I look at 30, 30 had my yellow line for being a multiple of two, and it also had my red line for being a multiple of three. If it's a multiple of two and three, so that means it's divisible by two and three, that means it's also divisible by six. So what I can do to show that is I can show that it's got both of these lines in their box. So if it's got a red and a yellow line in their box, that means that it is divisible by two and three. So that means that it is a multiple of six. So now our next number that I have in my top row is four, right? Before already had a yellow line through it. So that means that it's a multiple of two. So it's not gonna be a prime number, right? It was able to be divided by two. So my next number is gonna be five. Five is prime because it can only be divided by one and five. So five is my next prime number. So now I'm gonna take a green and we're going to draw, we're gonna draw a vertical line through all of my multiples of five starting after five. So that would be five, 10 would be my next one, 15, 20, 25, 30. You notice the same kind of thing is happening that happened with um, when I was looking at my multiples of two. It's creating vertical lines. Any numbers that end in five or zero are going to be multiples of five, right? So I can just basically draw a line straight down my five column. All those numbers are multiples of five and any number that ends in a zero is also gonna be a multiple of five. So my multiple of five key is going to have a green line down the middle of it. So now you notice numbers like, multiple numbers like, you know, all of these numbers that end in zero, right? All of my numbers that end in zero have a yellow and green line, right? So if I look at like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, they all have a yellow and a green line. That's because they were all multiples of two and five. Well, numbers that are all multiples of two and five are gonna be multiples of 10 because five times two is 10. So my multiples of 10 is going to be shown by a green line and a yellow line. So all of my numbers that have a green line and a yellow line in them are going to be multiples of 10. All right, so my next number is going to be uh, six, but six already has my lines through it. So it's not a prime number, right? It was multiples of two and three. So my next number is gonna be seven. Seven is also a prime number because seven is only divisible by one and seven. So now we are going to draw a, uh, a diagonal going the other way from left to right using blue for all of my multiples of seven. So my first one was seven. I'm not gonna use that. My next one would be 14. It's gonna go this way. 14, my next one would be 21. Then 28. Then I would have 35. Then my next one would be 42. Next one would be 
and 98. So those would be all of my multiples of seven. So our, the sevens do form a pattern. It's just not as obvious as other ones, but if you can see, they're about the same distance apart as I go, right? It looks like there's kind of like, you know, two or three boxes in between each number as I go diagonally. So we're gonna draw our diagonal blue line through my multiples of seven on my key, which would be right there. And so now we're going to continue along our top lines and I'm gonna look at eight. Well, eight already had a line through it, right? So it was a multiple of two. Nine had a red line through it, so it was a multiple of three. And 10 has two lines through it, so it was multiples, it was multiple of two and five. So now my next number is going to be, um, I'm sorry. So all my numbers in my, uh, in my top row have already been marked. So any other numbers I have left that don't have any markings through them are going to be prime numbers. So that would be 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97. Those are all of my prime numbers from one to 100. Those are all of the prime numbers I have. So all of those numbers cannot be divided by two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. They can only be divided by one and themselves. You won't have to memorize these numbers necessarily right now. Uh, you will have your own little, you know, kind of cheat sheet for prime numbers one through a hundred. But this is how we can basically sift out our uh, prime numbers from our hundreds chart. All right, y'all. So let's look at today's assignment. So today's assignment is going to have a couple different things. So you have a few slides that y'all are going to do on your own. So they're all going to be about prime and composite numbers. So our first slide of the lesson you have uh, definitions, right? And we talked about those a little bit today and yesterday. So you have either composite number, factor, or prime number. So you have to figure out, you know, a number multiplied by another number to find a product, a number with more than two factors, or a number with exactly two factors, one in itself. And you will drag the word, you know, to the spot, right? So you will drag the word to its spot and then leave it there. Our next couple slides are going to be uh, determining what numbers are prime or composite. So if you say 21 is prime, you will drag prime right there. And there's a few copies of it, right? So there will be enough copies so that way you have um, enough for filling out the entire thing. You can use your um, prime number list that is attached to this assignment in order to help you on that. Remember, prime numbers are what is on what we sifted through, what we were left. Any number that is composite is a number that is has, you know, more than two factors, three or more factors, right? So if I can skip count by a number to it, if I, I can divide it by any number other than one in itself, then it's composite. So we've got two slides of that. Now we've got true and false. We have that one is a prime number. All even numbers are composite. All odd numbers are prime. Two is a composite number. So think about your prime numbers in order to answer these true or false questions. Slide six and seven are going to be a sorting kind of problem. So you're going to drag 
you know, if you think 11 is prime, you're going to drag 11 to the prime side, right? If you think 45 is composite, you'll drag 45 to the composite side until you have no numbers left. And same thing for slide seven. Our last slide, well, no, not our last slide, our eighth slide is going to be a, um, a maze, basically. But there aren't any, you know, there aren't any lines to it. What you're doing is you are going to help this monster, this blue monster, right, find his friend by following the path of prime numbers. And we're going to cover the prime numbers in the blue squares. So your starting right here is at 13. So you'd put a blue square over 13. And then basically, you're going to go whichever number next to 13 is a prime number. Well, I know 21, 26, 39, and 85 are composite numbers. So that means my only prime number is going to be 41. So I'd put a square right there. So then you're going to figure out next to 41, which one of these numbers is prime. Well, I know seven's a prime number, right? So you put a square right there. And so then you're figuring out, okay, out of all the numbers that are touching seven, what number is prime? Well, 63 is a multiple of three. 24 is a multiple of three. 48 can be divided by eight. Six is even. 29 is my only prime number. So I'd put a square right there. If ever you run out of squares, so like my next number, if I was figuring out which one was prime that is touching 29, that would be two, right? So I'd put a square right there. So now I'm out of squares, right? So, well, you've got all these other squares that you can use in order to figure out your way to the finish. The finish is at 23. So you're going to use those squares in order to basically show which direction you are going. And like I said, you can use your, um, you can use your uh, prime number slip to solve this. All right, really quick, let's talk about our secret code. So the secret code for this lesson to make sure that you watched it is pumpkin, P-U-M-P-K-I-N, pumpkin. So you'll type pumpkin right in there, and that is your secret code to show that you watched this assignment. All right, and then our very last slide is going to be kind of like a short answer question. So you need to describe the difference between prime and composite numbers and give an example of each. So in this blue box, you're going to double click and you'll type, you know, whatever your difference is between them. There are plenty of differences between them, right? So uh, remember, prime numbers only have two factors, one in, one in themselves. Composite numbers have three or more factors. And then give an example of each of them. Remember, our prime numbers are on our list. Every other number is composite. So, you know, all even numbers other than two are composite, right? Because they can be divided by two. So make sure you're using that in order to answer those questions. We will go over some of the stuff from this assignment later on um, when we meet the second time. Let me know if you all have any questions and have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye.